Today as England's leading footballer, now confirmed as captain of club and country. He's Britain's costliest player, and he's also currently Manchester United's leading goal scorer. And he'll only lose that distinction when their forward players improve their own scoring rate. Norman Whiteside, Steve Coppel and Arnold Muren return today after missing Tuesday's defeat at Coventry. Out go Ray Wilkins, Ashley Grimes and Scott McGarvey, who drops to substitute. But no changes in defence, because prior to that Coventry game, United had kept six successive clean sheets and still have the best defensive record in Division 1. Aston Villa, like United, took only one point out of six over Christmas. The Tokyo trip seemed to signal a slump in their form, and it's since cost goalkeeper Jimmy Rimmer and England forward Tony Morley their places. Mark Walters and Nigel Spink have been given their chance. Spink, who came on for Rimmer early in that European Cup final against Bayern Munich, will need to be on form again today if Villa are to end a run of over 28 years without a league win here at Old Trafford. Referee this afternoon is George Tyson from Sunderland. So two famous clubs, each worried about their recent form. Aston Villa wearing white shirts today, playing from right to left. And already an offside. Usual combination of Peter Wyth and Gary Shaw playing forward for Aston Villa. Mistake by Evans, covered by Gibson. But he was over ambitious. Moses got a foot in. This is Muren. And the deflection comes off Ken McNaught for the corner. Arnold Muren, who had the shot. And the United lineup here is McQueen going onto the line. Whiteside standing just off the line, and Stapleton in the six yard box. McQueen up for the flick on. And Whiteside had pulled away initially, and as he drove the ball back, there was a deflection. Although it'll be a throw-in on this side of the field. Moses. Nicely back to him by Robson. That's Moses' cross. McQueen is still well forward here. Oh, and a bad one by Mortimer, straight to Arnold Muir, and the flick inside. Speak comes with Brenner, and Stapleton drives, and over. Well, a mix-up there in the Aston Villa defence. Nigel Spink came for the ball. Bremner was in there. Defenders, perhaps, and goalkeeper not at one. And as it bounced for Stapleton, he couldn't direct his shot underneath the crossbar. So a let-off, really, there for Spink and Aston Villa. Aston Villa trying to find a foothold in the match. Cowns, though, looking for Bremner. Overreaches. Whiteside and his Stapleton. And a deflection, and it might run for Whiteside again. Spink saved it. Stapleton couldn't get there, McNaught could. Ball didn't run kindly there for United. Whiteside looked as though he might jab it in. Stapleton had a chance as well as Spink had come out. Didn't fall for them. It'll be a corner. And Stapleton up with Spink this time. It's been fisted back to Steve Koppel. And headed out by Bremner, only as far as Muren. Koppel again. Teases Gibson. In it goes, and Moran and McQueen are up together, and there's a chance. And Robson wouldn't go in. Stapleton and Spink. How did he survive there? Ask one of the men on the ground, don't ask me. Amazing. United finding that the ball just won't go in the net. But they must have had three or four strikes there in a matter of a couple of seconds, and the ball still finished in the arms of the Aston Villa goalkeeper. With, uh, was impeded, it seemed, by that of McQueen, but uh, play goes on. Augustin, Robson. Good triangle there involving Muren as well. Augustin will now continue his run. Well, Manchester.
Manchester United now well into their fourth match without scoring. And the longer it goes on, I suppose, the greater the danger that uh, their confidence is affected. Trying to put an end to the sequence here is Orbiston. Well, he may have helped to do so. He's forced a corner off Gary Williams. Backing a touch and a chance for Robson and turned in. Frank Stapleton was there inside the six yard box to finish it off from Brian Robson's earlier effort. And the barren run has ended. Well, three matches without a goal plus 30 minutes here. I think that must make what 300 minutes. And at last, Manchester United are back on target corner played across Robson had the first strike Stapleton was lurking in the six yard box and that's 1-0 and relief spreads round Old Trafford because it had seemed that the ball would never go in Williams or McQueen has stumbled Shaw with a chance Bell appeals for a penalty yes given the first mistake was by McQueen Gary Shaw had a chance. He appeared to be tripped, and referee George Tyson had no doubt at all and pointed to the spot. Gordon Cowens, five penalties already converted this season. with some comfort so it's two goals here in a minute all together now Cowens has scored eight for Aston Villa six penalties and that one he just tucked quietly to one side of Gary Bailey who had no chance so within a minute of taking the lead Manchester United are back where they started Stapleton, white side. Well, it certainly brought the match to life, that little spell. Muren. Stapleton started his run. Oh, it's a lovely touch back, but nobody able to take advantage. Nevertheless, the applause for the mobility of Frank Stapleton. We've got just under three minutes left in the first half. This is Robson. Orbiston. Moses. It's Robson again. There's a little deflection on that, and Spink is going to try and save it and can't. So a corner to United. to them they've got bodies there to get the ball away time being added on now for stoppages at the end of the first half it's Gary Shaw pulling it back 
And Moses with time to turn on that and look for Whiteside. Good touch, Koppel. Stapleton starts a run on the left. That will not find him. And if Goalmouth incident is the name of the game, then Manchester United provided plenty of entertainment in the first half. Frank Stapleton scoring, although there were many other near misses. But within a minute of that, Aston Villa equalised when Gordon Cowan scored from the penalty spot. So at half-time at Old Trafford, it's one each. Well, the Stretford end booed the penalty decision, but they probably had the best view of anybody. We can see it from behind the goal, and Kevin Moore and Pat not intending to catch Gary Shaw like that, so maybe it was a little harsh, but Shaw certainly went down, and George Tyson, for one, had no doubts at all. That penalty was only the fifth goal that United have let in here in the league this season, and only the seventh that Villa have scored away from home in the first division. Indeed, it's uh, only once in the last 16 months that United have let in more than one goal in a match here at Old Trafford, and their neighbours City put two past them earlier this season. It's the other end where most of their problems have been, and trying to put them right here on the near post is Whiteside with the flick on. Spink coming out. This is Brenner. That's a good looking ball. Mortimer made the forward run. And the ball carried. Fortunately for Gary Bailey, it was a very good ball by Des Bremner. Mortimer got behind the defence. Bailey came out. Didn't make contact with man or ball, and a goal kick. Warren into white side. on the edge of the area, white side fouled. So Manchester United's turn to uh, perhaps do something from a set play. Arnold Muren useful with the left foot, as we all know from here, but so too is Brian Robson in their different ways. And that was Muren, and he's hit the post, and this is Moran. And he pulled it back in, and they're all up for that, and away by Bremner. <laughs> Typical Arnold Muren effort. Firm and accurate, clipped against the post. And up goes Moran, oh, and Spink did well against the feet of Steve Coppel initially. From Moran's header. Cowens Moses Koppel away from Cowens can he beat Gibson that's Duxbury that walk with right side hooked away by Cowens Shaw having to defend Robson and again Aston Villa pressed right back for the corner all McQueen's there again and so is Moses up the line Moses appeals the handball they chased the referee for a possible penalty didn't get one Gordon Cowans I think it was on the line for Moses first but what a good save that was and Moses went in again then there was a field for hands now it's Muren, right side. Is there a chance here? And McGraw gets the ball out. Well, it's like a, an assault course, really, in that Aston Villa penalty area. It has been most of the game. And look at that, they're slicing it now in their anxiety. And it goes from McQueen. Koppel! Well, 
Sphinx has cooled down, but uh, it's been fairly hectic in there, to say the least. What a clearance off the line, and Moses doubly denied. Cowan's away from Moses. And Shaw. And With couldn't reach it. In fact, With complained about the quality of the cross. And the attendance has just been announced on the electronic scoreboard here at Old Trafford. 41,545. A fine gate when you bear in mind that United were at home last Monday. They're at home this coming Monday and at home again in the FA Cup next Saturday. White side. Oh, what a good turn. Oh, he left him in his wake there. Stapleton. And can Koppel drive one? What a goal! What a goal by Steve Koppel. And two of the players who have taken a certain amount of criticism for Manchester United's lack of goals play a part in that one. Norman Whiteside leaving McNaught sprawling, got away. That caused the opening, but when Koppel ran onto that, what a finish. And so Manchester United take the lead for the second time in the match. And now it's a question of whether they can keep their nerve and not get caught on the rebound as they were in the first half. Superb approach play by Whiteside, and for Koppel, only his fifth goal of the season, but surely his best. And that's Stapleton on to Koppel. Wide on this side is Mirren, if the ball can be worked over. And Stapleton touched it on for Brian Robson, right foot, Moses, right side, he's missed it. And Manchester United look again an opportunity and must say they should have scored. Initially I think Brian Robson should have taken the responsibility with his right foot, but he checked. Perhaps preferring to try and get it onto the left, and when it ran loose to right side, he put it wide. maintain their interest in the championship Manchester United and their supporters well aware that this game has got to be won another slip at home won't do so while it remains 2-1 they've got to be careful and Walters has got to be careful as well because he's annoyed the referee in that last incident and gets the word and Stapleton got there Ken McNaught won't be too happy about that. The free kick was fairly orthodox and you wouldn't have thought Stapleton would have got a header into the back of the net from that position. But McNaught didn't stop him and neither could Spink stop the ball. So 3-1 looks a lot more healthy and it does reflect rather more fairly the way this match has gone. Stapleton congratulated by Brian Robson and his overall display this afternoon deserving of some good fortune now in front of goal. Cowens. It was 4-1 last year here to United against Aston Villa. But for the moment, it's Villa back on the attack. Why I say back? I don't know. They haven't been there too often. 
Back heeled for Cowens to chip one, and McNaughty's coming in, and the header past his own goal was, would you believe, by Stapleton, who just goes to show what an all-round player he is. It's played out wider for Mortimer to come in here, and Bremner. driven by Duxbury, hoping to find Cottle. <laughs> Duxbury. So, United at last find the goal touch, and in particular Frank Stapleton, part of a very impressive front three this afternoon for them. Norman White sort of having a good match, especially bearing in mind rumours about players United might sign for his position. And Steve Koppel, who tells me he's feeling fitter than for some time, he's now back in full training, or some training anyway, he scored a beauty. United then ending their lean spell, but Aston Villa now have taken only one point out of the last possible 15. Football in general, I'd, uh, I'd like to hope that uh, Bob Paisley has a ha very happy retirement, and uh, I wish he'd take Kenny Dalglish and Graham Sooners with him. I always enjoy playing against them, you know, so I'll be looking forward to the game. Any particular friends still in the side? Yes, there's still about four or five other players who were in the team for the, all the years I played there, you know, so I'll be looking forward to seeing them again. On the back of a good win against Aston Villa, uh, do you think that Manchester United's scoring touch, which has deserted you so often this season, has at last come right? Well, we're hoping so. We're hoping that the Villa result's got us back onto the goal-scoring ways, and we're hoping that we can pick up and uh, have a very good 83. Because in a sense, for you to be the top goal scorer is a bit contradictory, isn't it? Bearing in mind strikers are normally the, uh, the high scorers. That's right, but the way we play at United it allows me a lot of freedom to get forward. Um, you know, so I've been getting quite a few goals myself this season, but I'm hoping that Frank and Norman will both overtake us by the end of the season. Now, it was some year for you, 1982, wasn't it? I mean, have you had a chance yet to sort of reflect on all the things that happened to you? Yes, I really enjoyed uh, 82. The only thing that I didn't enjoy was not winning anything. Um, so I'm hoping 83, I can play up to the standards I did in 82, and uh, hopefully I can win something this time, though. Captain of both club and country now, confirmed. Uh, is that going to affect your game at any stage, or are you quite happy you can carry that off and still play as well as ever? No, I'm hoping that I can just keep up my performances and uh, just accept being captain, and hopefully it will give me more responsibility and I'll improve my game. Um, because 